I'm going to start this review with a bold statement. Cartridge Defense is one of my favourite tower defence games to have played in the last decade. Why? Because it merges together tower defence gameplay and deck building card game gameplay sublimely together and manages to make every game feel challenging and balanced. And so much in tower defence games is all around the careful balancing so that you can't kind of spam your way through to victory and overpower everything. Cartridge defence ensures that everything is on a fine knife edge and it's down to your tactics and your choices with a small amount of RNG and luck in there as well. But you stack the deck on your favour so that you can then get the wins and the results that you deserve as a tactician. So why am I so excited about Cartridge Defence? Well, this game might not be a looker, and I fully appreciate that when you're watching this gameplay. The detail here is in the balancing and what you've got in front of you. A lot of the systems in Cartridge Defence are interconnected, so it's really difficult to describe how this all works, so let me have a go. <laughs> Before you begin a battle, you need to first make sure that your deck is ready to go, and you'll be given a set amount of cards that you can bring into battle. Cards will largely be towers of all the different types of towers that are available, but there'll also be things like uh, building blocks to cut off dead ends or to place underneath towers to elevate them so that they've got more of a view and therefore a wider range of attack. It could be things like monuments that change and add in a, like a buff across the entire level, or it could be additional things like drawing uh, additional cards or resources or adding a random upgrade to a tower or something like that. You choose your deck and you need to choose in a really widespread uh, selection of cards because not necessarily around the types of towers that you're bringing in but in terms of their price because when you take the cards into battle you'll still need cash to play them and what this means is that you will need some really cheap ones like level one cannons or fire flame towers or whatever it is to try and get you up and running and then as you progress through each of the waves in the game you get given a set amount of cash at the end of each wave and that increases exponentially as you continue on through the levels and so what that means is that you can never truly get OP enough to then make the game easy because all of the cards are priced appropriately which means that you unlock an equivalent selection potentially of cards and then you need to choose the right one for your strategy and also have the cash and also have it in your deck to begin with so there's lots of strategic choices that mean that you can never truly get OP you can get overwhelmed though if you make bad decisions or if you have a particularly poor luck on your side in terms of how your deck is then shuffled and how the cards come out some of this is mitigated right at the very beginning of each round uh, or each play of a level, sorry, because you get to do a mulligan. So if, say, your top four cards are all, like, your most expensive cards, you're like, oh, what's happened there? You can choose to trade one back in again and then get a cheapo back out, which is quite helpful. There are times, though, where you don't get the the cards that you want and then this is where your extra kind of home base comes in down in the bottom right hand corner this is a place where you can buy towers for cash too it costs slightly more than what you would get in the actual cards and it's an incentive to make sure that you choose the right cards at the right time and build your deck appropriately so that you can always keep like minimal costs wherever possible but if you want a specific tower, you can buy it from your like home base shop. Your home base shop also governs how much you can level up towers when they're on the field. Every tower can be upgraded between level 1 to 5, but in order to upgrade something on the field, you must upgrade, upgrade your home base as well. So if you upgrade that to level 2 and then you've got loads of level 1s on the field for towers, now you can now pay to upgrade the level 1 towers to level 2 at the same time. That doesn't stop you if you've got a card that's got level 3, 4 or 5 stuff to lay that down because you aren't paying to upgrade it, if that makes sense. So again, it's making sure that your deck has a widespread of things that you can start off and get up to grips with and survive the early rounds 
and then you can lay down the real chonky ones later on. And if you get the rubber the green, then it means that you don't have to invest too much in upgrading your actual shop so that you can then upgrade your towers. Again, having some luck on your side really helps, but having that deck built appropriately and making the right choices is key to all of this. As you go through all of the different levels, um, more and more options become unlocked and available. So right at the very beginning of the game, I was like, ah, oh, you can't tell how um, what tower should prioritize what. That becomes unlocked slightly further into the game. And then you get like about 25 different options that you can then choose from as to what you want the towers to prioritize. Again, these are all unlockable and you have to win certain challenges to be able to get them. You can only take eight of that like 25 into battle. So again, you get to customize exactly how you want your experience to be and that is one of the key strengths of cartridge defense in that you're customizing your deck you're customizing your prioritization you can do it on the hoof in between each round round or during if you want to all of your decisions around cards and upgrades of towers need to be done before you click on the next wave but you can watch and see exactly what happens and then go, oh, that was a bit rubbish and everything that's uh, fire related didn't really hold off all of those speedy <laughs> flyers that go running around very, very quickly. And so, yeah, you, you customise and prioritise as you go. You can save various different decks as well. You don't really lose cards. You can sell them off, but you can buy either card packs or individual cards using two different types of currency as you go through the game. And so if you're really desperate for a certain type of card, some of them can be bought just generally, others of them have to be won. There's also an interesting sponsored challenge, which is where some pretend in-game sponsors have sponsored some cards, and then you have to replay the campaign maps but with randomised enemies to try and win those cards. You can also then take that same principle into endless mode, which is a giant empty grid for you to try and survive <laughs> um, with a 120 waves, I think that is. So it's not like totally endless, but again, you can win a lot of things from that. And what I really like about these modes is that if you feel that you're actually not ready because you don't have a good enough deck or it's just not landed in your favour. You can choose at certain points in the game to cut your losses and run and take a small proportion of your winnings along with you. And I found myself doing that quite a lot, <laughs> especially in endless mode. I couldn't get very far with that. <laughs> but again, it all comes down to building your back, uh, deck. Sorry, In endless mode, you can take up to 100 cards in. Um, if there's 571 to choose from and you can have one or two of each, then you've got choices aplenty and it just depends on how it all lands for you. So that all sounds fantastic, but what if you're a bit of a struggler in terms of, oh, I'm not sure if I want to really sit there and play around organizing decks and so on and so forth, then you've got roguelike mode. Roguelike mode gives you a random selection of cards to begin with and you just keep going until you die basically and fall over throughout all of the levels. So it's trying to see how far you can get from a starter deck that is either designed for you or you can pick it at random so that you have to kind of deal with what's been given to you rather than synthesizing the deck for yourself to then go into battle individually. Um, I found that particularly difficult because I have like very set ways of thinking about tower defense games and how I play, but it offers you up different ways of trying to play the game, which I thought was just very, very interesting. There's loads of other extras that are flying in all over the place and other mechanics such as um, putting on specific buffs to things. Um, there are enemies which can't be hit from the front because they've got shields, so you need to hit them from the sides and behind. That's quite unusual in a tower defense game. So then you're trying to work out, OK, I can't send my uh, line through the maze in like direct lines everywhere. They're going to have to keep on spiraling around. So it just it changes up how you play things constantly all the time. Armoured um, enemies that come in that need to be 
armor pierced or shield pierced first do you then try and unlock some of those buffs that you can then spend um your hard-earned cash on the on the cards that can then help go for that or do you rearrange your maze in a way that sees fit do you use blocks to cut off dead ends or do you use it to raise up something so that you can then uh, have a wider range and therefore not need to cut off dead ends loads and loads of different options for you and yeah it's just one of those games that i've sunk hours into every single night since launch i cannot speak highly enough of it yes it might not look the most exciting because it's in that dark dank cyberpunk feel but the detail here in the way how a game is truly well balanced to a point that it doesn't matter if you're playing on level one or level 30 the challenge is real and balanced and always meeting you where you're at because all of the different um, gameplay mechanic loops just dock in perfectly and beautifully in a way that means that you can't break the game. So yeah, I can't speak highly enough about it. If you have an inkling around tower defense and you like to spend some hours uh, running around in this, this is a must buy. Um, and it comes with a definite Smithy recommendation. Thumbs up. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com. You guys take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.